And I'm going to set up Facebook. Uh, going live just a few minutes early because I've discovered if I come on just a few minutes late, y'all think I ain't coming. <laughs> and I am here on my post. So we're going to start right at 2.30. That's my time. But uh, I'm going to give people a few minutes to come on on both Facebook and Periscope. Now, uh, you want to invite people, uh, invite people on. And when you're on Periscope, invite them to come on. When you're on Facebook Live, uh, post it other places, share, you know, send out a text message, let your friends know. Because once again, uh, you hear me say it every week when a prophetic word goes forth, you want to share it with as many people as possible. But why do we do that? That's not that's not me trying to be braggadocious or promote myself. That's not why I say that. The reason we want to share it with as many people as possible is because the spirit of God is speaking through the mouth of his prophets. And when the spirit of God does that, see, the interesting thing about the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost knows how to tailor a message to speak specifically to you. That's how you know as my sister. That's how you know it's God talking. Always remember that preaching tends to happen to a bunch of people at once, but prophetics, prophesying is personal. So sometimes preaching in a larger venue is God talking to us. Prophesying is always God talking to you. And so whenever the spirit of God is releasing a word, the spirit of God has this ability and it's not something you can figure out, but it's just awesome. It's just awesome. Remember, you hear me say all the time that God has already lived every day that there is to live. And so sometimes we forget that. So if you, this is Sunday, October 25th, God has already lived this day. 2020, God's already lived this day. God's already lived tomorrow. October 26th, Monday, 2020. God's already lived that day. He knows what time he's going to make the sun come up. He's already planned it out but he's already actually lived it. So God is in seven o'clock tomorrow night dealing with everything that's gonna happen at seven o'clock tomorrow. God is in 2025, in March of 2025, dealing with everything that's gonna happen in March of 2025. He's already lived all of these days. We're the ones that experience him in two 12 hour cycles, not God. So that's why when the Holy Ghost gives a prophetic word, he has an ability to tailor that message specifically to a listener. For those of you that are more familiar with the anointing, you know that sometimes you can be hearing something and the Holy Ghost speaks right to you. He just cuts it straight to your heart, straight, it just hits you right in the middle of your chest. And it's, it's unbelievable, okay? Only the Holy Ghost can do stuff like that. So that's why I say, whenever a prophetic word is going forth, you wanna share it as many places as you can. You wanna give as many people an opportunity to hear God. Another reason that's important, and the, the main reason I do a weekly live prophetic word is because it is literally the way to prophetically check in with the Holy Spirit every week. You should be doing that every day, but apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops, deacons, and elders can't make you, they're, they're not gonna live in your life with you. <laughs> they're not gonna walk through each day with you, okay? The only time you get that in your life is when you are a child. You have mom and or dad there, hopefully both, to walk with you every day, to help you with your first steps to your first meal, to learning how to write everything you need to learn. But at some point you become an adult and no one's, that, that's why a lot of people don't make it through college. College is not 13th grade, college is not high school. No one's gonna walk through your life with you every day. That's your responsibility once you get grown. That includes any type of spiritual position God has put in the body. Your pastor, your apostle, your prophet, your bishop, your deacon, your elder, they're not gonna walk through each day of your life with you. It's up to you. So the reason that I do a weekly live prophetic word is so at least once a week, we can check in with the Holy Spirit. We can ask the Holy Ghost, what are you saying? And that's how a lot of people end up in situations that they didn't want to be in because they never asked the Holy One, the Comforter and the guy, what's going on? Where are we? They never located themselves in the spirit. What is Jesus saying? 
What am I supposed to be doing? That kind of thing. So that's why I do a weekly live prophetic word. So at least once a week on Sunday, the first day of the week, Saturday is the last day of the week. Saturday is the seventh day, the Sabbath day. Sunday is the first day of the week, if you didn't know that, on our calendar. So at the first day of the week, we can ask the Spirit of God, what are you saying? What do you want us to know? What What's coming up? For example, okay, ooh, somebody's going to be in a car accident by Wednesday. I'm trying to see if I can see who it is. I'm seeing... I'm seeing some some light stuff, maybe some some light clothes, and maybe it's during the daytime. Uh, now you say, well, that's too general, Prophet Taylor. That doesn't mean anything. Any prophet could say that, okay? Or anybody could say that. Somebody's gonna be in a car accident, okay? This is gonna be this Wednesday between eight and nine a.m. Involves a woman, and I see her have long long, dirty blonde, sandy blonde hair with a blue shirt and a black blazer, or some combination of blue and black that she's wearing. Might be kids involved because I see a crosswalk. That's what I mean. Stuff like that. Stuff like that only comes, <clears throat> comes by the Holy Ghost. So that's why I do a weekly live prophetic word. So once a week, we can ask the Holy Ghost, what are you saying? What's coming up in the next week? What do we need to get ready for? What is Jesus saying? Where is Father God in his seasonal orchestration of life events? Because all I need to worry about is my portion in that. Okay? That's why so many people end up married to the wrong person. Whole lot of people are married to the wrong person. Do you know why you're married to the wrong person? You're married to the wrong person because you didn't bother to ask the Lord before you got married. You met somebody, you liked them, or there's something about them that you liked, and you thought that was enough to make a marriage work. That's not enough to make a marriage work. <clears throat> when you're attracted to someone, I'll stop by to tell you, you're attracted to certain things about them. If you marry someone, you have to deal with everything about them. Let me say that one more time. This isn't a prophetic word. I'm just waiting on people to show up and giving you guys a chance to like and share and invite some of your friends. When you meet someone and you're attracted to them, you're attracted to certain things about them. If you marry them, you have to deal with everything about them. And there's no way that you can see or know everything about another person because you don't see or know everything about yourself. Haven't you ever been in a situation where you surprised yourself? <laughs> you reacted a certain way and you're like, oh, I didn't know that was in there. Haven't you ever been in a situation like that? No matter how old you are, where somebody caught you wrong or somebody said something and you came from a place that you may have never seen yourself do before. And you was like, okay, that's you surprising you. I'm just gonna let that sink in. I'm just gonna let that hit. That's you surprising you. If you don't know everything about yourself and you don't know everything about you, what in the world makes you think that because you like somebody's body, or because you like their money, or because you like the people that hang around, that that that's enough to make a marriage work. And we do it all the time. You have to ask the one that invented people about who you should get married. That's what prophetics are for. So you can get a live word from the creator. And that's why I tell you all the time, you must develop your own prophetic, because what you're gonna do when pastor, apostle, prophet is not around. You got to learn how to get a word from the Lord for yourself. And that's why a whole lot of people are in bad relationships right now. Because you met somebody, they turned you on, they made you hot. And you say, <clears throat> I got to get with them. <clears throat> As you experience that person, you discover there were a whole lot of things about them that you didn't know. And there were a whole lot of things about them that you didn't see. Okay. The Holy Ghost could have saved you that drama. Did you know that? That's the advantage of being a Christian that walks in the prophetic. The Holy Ghost could have saved you all of that drama if you bothered to ask him. That's why he's here. Jesus is listening to Father. The Holy Ghost is listening to Jesus. The Holy Ghost only says what Jesus says.
He's our connection to father and son. So why would you not want to, the Holy Ghost can tell you who your kids are in the womb before you birth them. You are actually supposed to know if you didn't know that. <clears throat> if you didn't know that you're supposed to know who God is sending, if you're a man through your seed, if you're a woman through your womb, God will tell you who your children are before they come out here. And you're supposed to name your children according to their destiny. Well, why is that? Because every time you speak, you create reality with your words. So my name is David. My name means beloved and I am. And so when everybody, whenever somebody says my name, they are calling me beloved. And they say, David, that means beloved and I am. So that speaks to my life. That speaks to my destiny. That's right. But sometimes people misname their kids. And did you know you can put a curse on your kids through misnaming? You can name them something and you didn't research the name. You don't even know what that name means. And you keep saying it because you keep calling them that name. And then everything that comes along with that name gets on them. Did you know that? So this is what I'm trying to tell you. The Holy Ghost can save you all that trouble and all that drama if you asked him before you made the decision. This is the advantage of being a believer because the spirit of God is not in unbelievers. They only have their senses, their mind, their education, and what the devil tells them. We have the word of God, the Bible, written word of God. We have Jesus, the living word of God. And we have the very spirit of God, the very one that moved on the face of the waters when they were creating earth. That person, he's with us, in us. And that's why he wants to give us the advantage of him being here. Now, can you see? And then my sister says, I am beloved. Amen. So now can you see just on this little bit I'm telling you now why you need the prophetic? Can you see how it's nothing but an advantage in your life? That's why I do a weekly live prophetic word. That's why as many people as possible need to hear it. And as many believers as possible need to develop your own prophetic. Because the Holy Ghost will get down to small details of your life and tell you, don't take that way to work. I've done that coming home from church. Coming home from church, uh, if there's construction on the Dan Ryan, I ask the Spirit of God, which way should I go? Should I get on the 94 or should I go to Lakeshore Drive? Because the Holy Ghost will lead you around accidents and save you time. See, nobody can do stuff like that but the Spirit of God. So why would you not want that advantage? All Prophet Taylor, I don't believe all that crazy stuff. You Christians are just a bunch of crazy people. I don't believe all that stuff. Then handle life on your own. You can't see three feet behind you. If danger is behind you, you can't see it until it comes up on you. You won't feel it until it's on you. Every night when you go to bed, you are dead to the world. No matter how much or how little sleep you get, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 hours, however long you sleep, you're dead to the world. How, how do you know how many spiders can crawl across your leg? How do you know? How do you don't know? But you keep telling God that I got this, <laughs> that you think just your five senses and your education, your awareness is enough to navigate through life. But God says, I've opened my hand and given you a gift, the prophetic. I can tell you about things before they happen. I can warn you away from places you don't want to go. And I can lead you because Jesus is a good shepherd, so sweet and loving and kind. Jesus is a good shepherd. He said, I want to lead, lead you to green pastures. I want to lead you to still waters. So in other words, you have plenty to eat and you can eat in peace. That's what still waters mean. That while I'm trying to get a drink of water, the Lord is busy protecting me from the wolves so I can just relax and go on and get the water and I'll be all right because I have a good shepherd guarding over me with his rod and with his staff. That's the advantage of being led by Jesus. If you don't want to be led by Jesus, you are out there against the wolves on your own. OK, so <clears throat> that's just a preamble to help you understand why I do a live prophetic word every week to give you a chance to hear, to give me a chance. I'm listening to to hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church, but also to me individually, to you individually, because the Holy Ghost will make the message come alive to you. And that will prepare you for the days to come. Don't you know that, that the Spirit of God has been talking about this pandemic since at least summer of 2019? Did you know that? 
since at least summer of 2019. If you don't believe it, go back and look at my videos because I'm not the only prophet that said it. Uh, but go back and look at my videos on my YouTube channel and go back to summer of 2019. And you'll hear me talk about famine and pestilence is coming. Famine and pestilence is coming. I've been saying that since at least August of 2019. Did you know that? Okay, so let's get on with today's live prophetic word, okay? So remember, like, share this video and invite as many people as you can. Today's live prophetic word is, let me put it on the screen. Today's live prophetic word is falling up, falling up. What'd you say, Prophet Taylor? <clears throat> I'll explain. Let's go into prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, O Spirit of God, for indwelling us. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood and giving your life. Thank you, O God, that you are a rewarder of those that diligently seek you. Thank you for your kindness. You are the great God that reigns over everything that you made, yet you are gentle and kind and meek and lowly in heart, just like you said you were. And I just bless your name and I thank you for the privilege and opportunity to know you and the privilege and opportunity to serve you and to invest in something eternal that will not fade away. I just thank you, God, because that's, that's something that only you could do. That is only the hand of God and I bless your name for making the opportunity available. So I surrender myself, I die to myself right now. You rise up in me, you speak through me. I must decre decrease so you can increase. Let the words be spoken, be what you want. So you can be glorified, so the believers can be edified. So hell can be horrified. And so unbelievers can be challenged to turn from their way of life and to listen to you. I thank you for it. And I believe you for it. And I believe that signs and wonders and miracles shall follow this word for all that believe it and apply it. In Jesus' name, I pray and decree it. And it is so. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is falling up. Prophet Taylor, that sounds kind of confusing. I don't understand that. Let me read you the scripture reference. <clears throat> A scripture reference is Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Now, Proverbs is an entire book in the Old Testament, an entire book of the Bible dedicated to wisdom, dedicated to wise sayings, dedicated to learning how to navigate life in uh, the way of godly wisdom, because godly wisdom is not the same as worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom is, oh, hello, uh, Vanya Kumar. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Vanya Kumar, God bless you. And uh, earlier, I think I saw Jay Mason. God bless you. Uh, my sister, Lisa, my son is here. Uh, God bless you. Thank you all for watching me live and remember to share. Okay, so worldly wisdom, wisdom is what I described a few minutes ago, which means you just live by your senses and your own intellect and your own education. Godly wisdom means you live by what the word of God says and what the spirit of God says. And that's why I was telling you before, that's an advantage. That's an advantage that you cannot achieve on your own as a human. So that's why there's no one in a right mind that wouldn't want to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Why wouldn't you want to have someone living inside of you that knows all of your days before you lived them? I'm just going to let that hit. Okay. So the book of Proverbs is an entire book in the Old Testament that's dedicated to teaching you the ways of godly wisdom, how God thinks, what's the wise thing to do, because Proverbs is dedicated to real life situations. Now, some of the language, I'm going to read different translations. Some of it, if you, if you grew up reading King James or you're more familiar with King James, it's very old English, but the book of Proverbs is talking about life which is why you can't let people tell you that the Bible is not relevant. Okay? I'm always dealing with the haters because the haters are lying. They don't know what they're talking about. I told you who the haters were. The haters are number one, the huffy stuffies. The <laughs> haters are people that get in a huff and they all stuffed up and puffed up because they think that they invented God and they think that don't nobody know God but them. And they think that 
Can anybody teach you about God but them? And they think that God has to look and act like they think. Them is the Huffy Stuffies. Huffy Stuffies hate the Holy Ghost. Because when you deal with the Spirit of God, you have to surrender control. You have to surrender. You've got to decrease. It's not about you. And other people that are haters are the colonizers, slave owners, people that told you that being a Christian is about how much abuse you can take and still keep smiling. That ain't God, and that's not the Bible. <laughs> that's people that are trying to take your stuff. People that think they have, they have more of a right to enjoy their lives than you do. Those are slave owners. Those are colonizers. Those are the haters, okay? I'm dealing with haters on because I'm trying to do a shepherding, a prophetic shepherding function to protect you from the haters. Don't be listening to people that think that they own God or they invented God or don't nobody know God but them. And don't be dealing with people that think that they have a right to life, liberty, and happiness, but you don't. Neither one of those things are from God. Neither one of those things are from God. That's why they're haters, okay? So the book of Proverbs dedicated to practical wisdom. The book of Proverbs talks about relationships, talks a lot about sex, talks a lot about adultery, talks maybe even the most about money. It talks about raising children. It talks about business dealings. It talks about um, a life learning, you know, school of hard knocks, what life will teach you. Uh, it talks about life. So that's why you can't let people <laughs> tell you that the Bible is old and isn't relevant. The entire book of Proverbs is talking about your life. So we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. I'm going to read a couple of different translations. Um, I'm going to read first the NIV. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. New Living Translation, the godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. English Standard Version, for the righteous fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Berean Study Bible. For though a righteous man may fall seven times, he still gets up, but the wicked stumble in bad times. Okay? So today's prophetic word is falling up. And what the Spirit of God wanted me to release today was that <clears throat> first and foremost, to not go on a guilt trip or a condemnation trip or a shame trip because you've made a mistake or because you've made mistakes in life. Remember I told you before about the huffy stuffies, the self-righteous religious people? Uh, let me give you a principle. Man requires perfection, God does not. One more time. Man requires perfection, God does not. People are gonna follow you around over your life and look at the stuff that you do and say, you can't be saved or you can't be right or you're not this or you're not that because you did this, because you made this mistake or because you don't know that. Or I've been following you for 20 years, but I saw you do something wrong or I heard you say a bad word or you do something. And so you ain't a Christian, you ain't saved because man requires perfection. People think, can I share the scripture? Yes, Lisa, I will. Thank you for that request. I will put that in the box right now. Proverbs 24 and 16. And there we go on the screen. Proverbs 24, 16. So remember that man requires perfection, but God does not. And you will always have the huffy stuffies telling you because you made a mistake or because you've made mistakes or just generally because you're not perfect. Because if you follow anybody around long enough, you're going to see their faults because there's not one of us that doesn't have a fault or a flaw. And if you think you don't, that's your fault. You're self-righteous. <laughs> there's not one human breathing air on this planet that doesn't have faults and flaws. And there is no one that has a mistake-free life except the Christ. Jesus the Christ is the only one that had a mistake-free life. But all the rest of us regular folks, 
there's no one that doesn't have faults or flaws. And so people are going to follow you. We have entire cottage industries. We have entire YouTube channels. We have entire magazines that are dedicated to harping on, focusing on, uh, bringing out the dirt of man, the failures of man, the mistakes or whatever, because that is the way man is. Man requires perfection. God is not. That's why God is so much easier to get along with than a whole lot of people, <laughs> especially self-righteous religious people. That's why they're haters, because they'll tell you if you don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's the way we think you should. Well, then you're not a, a real Christian. You're not a real man. You're not a real black person. You ain't really black. Give up your black people card. Well, you're not a real this. You're not a real that. That's people. People are always telling you that you have to measure up to their idea of something or else they disqualify you. That's people requiring perfection. God does not. How do we know that God does not require perfection? It's in the scripture we just read. He says, for though a righteous man, a righteous man, okay, how does God count us as righteous? Because we believe in him. We're not counted righteous because we keep the law or that we're perfect in all our ways because ain't nobody getting in that way. Ain't nobody going to be righteous if you think it's by your efforts to be perfect. Yeah, nope, you're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to, the devil's hair going to catch fire because you're going to hit hell so hard trying to justify yourself before God based on your perfection. Mm, yep, nope. And if that's what you think, you're in for the shock of your life after you die. If you, gonna, if you think you're going to stand before a holy God and say, look how good I am, and look how, how good I live my life and look at what I've done, you're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to get the shock of your life because salvation is not by works. It's by the grace of God. He covers up. He covers us with his righteousness. So the Bible says that for though a righteous man, so that's talking about a believer, a believer in God through Jesus Christ. That's what makes you righteous, not your works. For though a righteous man may fall, may fall seven times. So that doesn't mean you have to fall necessarily. And it doesn't mean you have to fall seven times. You might learn your lesson in one. <laughs> sometimes some lessons, you know, sometimes some lessons we got to learn over and over and over again. Some lessons we can learn in one. <clears throat> you ain't got to fall seven times. <clears throat> You'd be like, okay, well, excuse me. You'd be like, okay, well, I see I don't want to do that again. You don't need to do that seven times. You can learn in one. But the scripture says, though a righteous man may fall seven times, he still gets up. Other translations, they rise again. They will get up again. Okay. Um, out of the Hebrew, when it says to, uh, he still gets up. To rise, stand up, stand. To rise. See, so what that means and what the Holy Ghost wanted me to say is that first, do not go on a condemnation or a guilt trip or a shame trip because you've made mistakes. Because the Bible says that righteous people may fall seven times. But here's the second part of that verse. You're gonna get up again. You can get up again. And that's why the prophetic word today is falling up. Did you know that you can ask God for wisdom and ask God to show you, why did I make that mistake, God? And God, show me the anatomy of my mistake. And I guarantee you the anatomy of your mistake will always start with how you think in your head and think in your heart. That's the origin of all your mistakes. You're thinking in your heart. You're thinking something in your heart that wasn't right. You're thinking something in your head that wasn't right. I guarantee you that's where it all started. And God will show you step by step. If I'm somewhere I don't want to be, how did I get here? And God will show you step by step. Well, this was your mistake here, or this is this was a series of decisions that you made that resulted in the result you have now. Uh, let me give you some practical examples because I always give practical examples, not just platitudes and not just principles. We need practicality. How do I apply this to my life? Okay. Let's say you're dealing with some health issues that were preventable. 
if you're dealing with health issues that were preventable, the reason that you got there is because of the input you were giving your body. Now, you don't have to be a licensed nutritionist to know, or, or well, maybe you don't know, but I'll, I'll say it. Uh, every diet actually has to be custom designed because everybody's body is different. Uh, everything about you feeds into how your body operates, your gender, your age, your ethnicity, literally the food you ate growing up in your formative years, the food you ate when you were a child and when you were a teen had everything to do with shaping the future of your body if you didn't know that, the kind of food that you eat now. And so, for example, some people might have an iron deficiency. Some people might need more protein. Uh, a whole lot of us need to cut the sugar and the salt. That weight is disproportionate. Way too much sugar, way too much salt. Not enough water, not enough protein. Some people have vitamin K allergies. And when you have vitamin K allergies, that means you can't eat green leafies. Because so, you know, they're always saying eat more fruits and vegetables. Some people can eat green leafies. That's lettuce, cabbage, uh, collard greens, uh, spinach, broccoli. They can't have any of that. So if you didn't know that, a physical diet must be custom designed for you. That's why the best thing to do is do your own research, but also work with a nutritionist and your, your primary care physician. I found out several years ago, uh, somebody in the doctor's office told me that black people metabolize salt differently than other ethnic groups. I didn't know that. And I asked them, is it because black people tend to have a high salt diet? Or is it really because our bodies, our kidneys and our liver tend to work differently? And they said, they're still not sure, but they said they've noticed that as black people go through life, the way we process salt in our system is different from other ethnic groups. I didn't know that. I just found that out a few years ago. So the point I'm trying to make is that your diet actually has to be custom designed for you if you didn't know that. And one of the ways that people have cured themselves from lifelong ailments is they started cutting certain things out of their diet and seeing what was triggering them. And sometimes you cut something out of your diet and you feel better so quickly until you realize I've been eating this food my whole life and it's been making me not feel good for all these years. Can you see that? Some other people eat that food and it's not a problem, but that's what that food was doing for you. That's a practical example of what I mean about how tracing your steps, tracing your steps to help figure out how did I get here? Uh, same thing is re with relationships. I talked about that a little bit before. Some people are in relationships with the wrong person. And you may not really see that they were wrong for you. And you may have been with them for quite some time. And then after a while, y'all just arguing all the time. Or after a while, the only time you get along is when you're being physically intimate. Like the only good time you have is when there's physical intimacy and everything else is just like one big argument. Or just, just there's a whole lot of things you can discover as you are uh, in a relationship. Okay. The Holy Ghost will help you trace your steps. <coughs> Excuse me. Your first problem was when you met him, you didn't vet them. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said, when you met them, you didn't vet them. What does that mean? That means that you did not really try to find out more about them, like who their family is before living, like where they're from, like uh, what their values are like how they spend their free time, like do they have a two, five, seven, 10 year plan? Like how do they spend their money? All different kinds of things. You got to meet somebody's parents if they're still alive. You got to see where they come from. One of my best friends, we were friends for quite some time. And then one day I met his parents. And as soon as I met his parents, I started smiling. I'm like, I get you now. I understood who he was as soon as I saw his folks. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. That, that's why you are the way you are because that's what you come from. Um, uh, geography has a lot to do with the way you think. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you come from a small town, ain't nothing wrong with coming from a small town. You think differently from someone that was born and raised or lives in a city. If you come from a place that always has bad weather, you think differently from somebody that comes from a place that always has good weather. Little things like that, okay? Whatever you saw your parents do, all that stuff you said you wouldn't do, <clears throat> I saw about to tell you, some of that stuff is in you. Some of that stuff is in you through nurture. You saw it. 
and some of that stuff is in you through nature because you got their DNA in you. Do you know how I know that? Because I've seen my kids do things that I know they ain't never seen me do. And they do it just like me. It, it blows my mind every time I see it. One day I saw my daughter do this hand gesture that I do when I'm thinking. Okay, because there's certain things I do when I'm thinking. And then I saw my daughter do that same thing I do. And I, I it just tripped me out. Sometimes when I listen to my son talk, it's like I'm hearing my voice outside my head. It trips me out every time. It's like he's walking through my brain, taking my thoughts, and he's saying them. Because they come from me. They're the seed, they're the fruit of my body. You see that? So when you meet somebody, the Holy Ghost will tell you that you did not vet them. You just got with them. Okay, because they were hot or you wanted their money or you were lonely or whatever you was going through. Now you're involved with someone that you're still really just learning. Now you're all involved. Okay, uh, when we're dealing with sexuality, sex is desired to take two and make them one for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That's why you can't listen to people talk about sex. You have to listen to the one that invented sex talk about sex because as, as humans, We've come up with all kinds of stuff regarding sexuality. If you think about it, all kinds of things regarding human sexuality, we as humans have come up with so many different angles and perspectives and whatever. But it seems like we never bother to ask the one that actually gave us our reproductive systems and the one that actually invented sexuality. Because when you ask him, he says that sex is designed to take two and make them one. And that's why sometimes when you've been physically intimate with someone, you might know you need to break up with them, but you have a really hard time doing it. You know why? Because you're bound up with them. You've been making yourself one with them. And sometimes you, you are amazed at the strength of the soul tie. And then you find yourself in a situation where one part of your brain is telling you, I don't need to be in this situation, but another part of your brain or your soul is telling you, but I don't want to leave them. You know why? because you've been becoming one with them. So that whole idea of casual sex is a lie, okay? It's, it's just a lie, it's just a lie. You, you, you're you binding yourself. You're taking two and making it one, just like God said. <clears throat> and sometimes that stays with you over years. Sometimes that stays with you over years. And so this is what I mean when I say the Holy Ghost will help you do all this stuff I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost will help you retrace your steps. How did I get here, Lord? How am I in a situation where I'm in a relationship I don't need to be in? Or I'm in a marriage that's not working or, or where, how did I get here? And the Holy Ghost will show you way back when you started, you thought that the sight of them was enough, that you just wanted to get with them because they turned you on. But the Lord will show you, the Lord says, I can see everything about a person because he really can. Because Superman ain't got nothing on Jesus. You talking about some x-ray vision. The Holy Ghost will tell you, I can see everything about them. I can see when they're born. I can see when they're going to leave this plane. I can see what they're thinking. I can see their motives. I can see them two, five, seven, ten 10 years from now. The Holy Ghost is, is even in between the atoms and the molecules of a person. The word of God is, is, is in between your bones and the marrow in your bones. God has knowledge of you on an even deeper than a molecular level. God knows how your spirit and your soul and your body is knit together. That's how he knows you. So if the Lord tells you to break up with a person, you have to learn to trust him to not get involved. You're like, you see him and you're like, hey, I want to go over there. I want to talk to him. And the Holy Ghost says, lead out alone. Then you have to learn how to trust the Holy Ghost when he tells you that. I think it was Yolanda Adams. I don't want to misspeak. I think it was Yolanda Adams who said there's a point in her life where she was uh, about to get married. She said she was at the back of the church and she heard the Lord say, don't you walk down that aisle and don't you marry that man. She walked down the aisle and married the man anyway, and they ended up having a bad relationship. And later on, she told her story and said, if I had just listened to the Lord, because he told me not to marry him. Can you see that? So 
this is why, again, like in the beginning of the video, this is the advantage we have as Christians. Stop feeling like that's a disadvantage. That's an advantage. You have the Holy One on the inside of you to let you know before you go down a path, this was going to happen if you choose that. And this is what's going to happen if you choose that. So the Bible says a just man falls seven times, but rises up again. So number one, don't go on a trip, guilt trip. Number two, ask the Lord to help you retrace your mistakes. Number three, ask God to make you better when you rise. Good God Almighty. Ask God to make you better when you rise. What does that mean? That means whatever level I was on when I fell, when I come back, bring me higher. If I didn't have any integrity, if I, if I had poor integrity, if I had poor morals and poor ethics, and that got me in trouble, when I come back, God strengthened my morals, strengthened my ethics, strengthened my character. If I had some money and I didn't know what to do with the money, then Lord, when I get some money again, or show me how to get some money, show me how to make it, show me how to keep it, show me how to manage it. If I had a relationship and maybe I lost that person and I lost that person and see, now this is the one thing that a lot of people won't do, which is why some people are gonna get married sometimes before they die. <laughs> I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. A whole lot of people refuse to look in the mirror. When you listen to people talk about their relationships, uh, uh, if you notice, they always talk about what that other person did. I have learned. Don't talk about what they did. Talk about what you did, what you do. Because that's the one life you got control of. So ask the Lord that when I rise from this last breakup, make me smarter. What did, what did I do wrong? What did I, what did I do? Not them. What did I do? Should I have never gotten involved with them? Did I make a wrong turn? Did I make a wrong choice? Did I have a wrong perspective? Was I seeing it wrong? So, so number three is when you make me rise, make me rise better, make me rise smarter. Why you want to keep going through the same thing seven times? Maybe it can be one and done. <laughs> but you have to ask the Lord because he's the source of wisdom. Make me rise better when I rise up. Make me rise better. If I had a health scare, some people have come back from heart attacks. Some people have come back from stroke. A lot of people have come back from COVID-19. Make me rise better. What can I do? Uh, I'll, I'll just give you some of my, now I've been doing this stuff for years. I didn't just start doing this this year just to know. But like, I take uh, supplements uh, where you can have like fruits and vegetables, immune boosting stuff and other vitamin C based supplements. I take supplements and stuff like that to boost my immune system all the time. I've been doing that for years. OK, uh, because I learned that when you are calling on your body to do certain things, you've got to feed your body what it needs to give you that back. And I've learned that one of the, the easiest yet best ways to improve your health is to boost your immune system. It's the most amazing thing. So, so way back before, because I look at pictures of myself before and I can see what kind of diet I had and I look at pictures of myself now and I can see a difference because I changed my diet. I cut out some things. I added some new things, but I also boosted my immune system. And I looked at like uh, when I when I got some stuff before and how it took me out of the equation because I just wasn't feeling well. And now how my immune system is better because I've been feeding myself things that can do it. Because I asked God, teach me, God, about nutrition. Teach me about this body that you gave me. When I get up from this bed of affliction, make me better. So, so number one, don't go on a guilt trip or a shame trip. Number two, ask the Holy Ghost to help you retrace your steps. And number three, Lord, when you make me rise, make me rise better. But let's look at this last thing and I'll be through. Okay. For though a righteous man may fall seven times, he still gets up. But the wicked, the wicked, okay, <clears throat> stumble in bad times. You need to understand what the Bible means when it's talking about wicked people. Because I know there's some confusion. And first of all, let me say, you have to throw out all that religion that tells you that you know, everybody's the same. Yeah, no, they're not. There's nowhere in the scripture. God is no respecter person, but all persons 
aren't the same. Okay. And what I mean by that is everybody's not the same in here. So you need to understand what wickedness is and what the Bible means when it's talking about a wicked person. Because I explained to you what a righteous person was, but what a wicked person is, is somebody that delights in doing wrong. A wicked person is someone that builds a lifestyle around hurting others. A wicked person is someone who that can't go to sleep at night unless they mess somebody else's day up. A wicked person is a person that delights in not listening to God. That's why I keep telling you the, the haters are the huffy stuffies. They don't want to know God. They make up their own version of God. They make up stuff and call it God. And then they tell you that you have to do what they say or else you ain't saved. Them is self-righteous religious people. What would you do to be saved if you never met them? Did they ever think about that? That's how you know self-righteous religious people when you meet them. They keep telling you that somehow they're the judge of who's saved and who's not. Let me ask you a question. How many people are saved in China right now? Don't look it up. Just tell me off the top of your head. How many believers in China right now? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't know. What the people in China gonna do to be saved without you to dare, without you there to tell them that they 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 saved or not? Can you see that doesn't make any sense? Them is self-righteous religious people that don't bit more know the Lord than my left shoe. They're not interested in knowing God. They're interested in control and attention. And like Jesus said, having the, the chief seats, being up front all the time, being the first, they're interested in form and fashion, and they hate the Holy Ghost. There's nobody that loves God that would hate the Holy Spirit of God. Just let that hit. So the, when the Bible says a wicked person, it's talking about somebody that makes it their business to do wrong, that makes it their business, literally their business to hurt others, that delights in shutting out everything that's good and focusing on things that bring harm and destruction. That's wickedness. So the Bible says people like that, what happens to them? He says, but the wicked stumble in bad times. What do, or, or one version, uh, version, New Living Translation says, but one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Uh, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Haven't we been in calamity with COVID? What the Bible there is talking about is the difference between people that listen to the Lord and people that don't. And that even if you make a mistake, don't, don't go on condemnation. Ask God to show you what you did wrong. Ask God to help you rise higher. And don't be like someone that doesn't want to hear what God has to say and that doesn't want to do good in their lives. Because if you are that person, the Bible says that it don't take but one disaster to take you out. The Bible says that when you get in hard times, you're going to, you're going to be taken out. Uh, uh, the Lord gave me a prophetic locator word at the beginning of this year. The Lord said that things were going to happen this year. This is in January. This is on my YouTube channel. The Lord said in January, things are going to happen this year. And the Lord said that only people that listen to me are going to make it. I mean, I don't know how much more plain the Holy Ghost can make that. See, you're not wicked if you make an effort to listen to Jesus. So you might not always do it perfectly. You might stumble and fall. That's okay. You're righteous. You're still righteous. You're a believer. And so when he already took our condemnation, okay? And he already took our shame and our guilt at Calvary's cross and gave us his righteousness in exchange on our account. So we don't have to go on a guilt trip. We're on a condemnation trip. We can ask him to help us retrace our steps. What did I do wrong? And when I rise this time, make me better. But number four, the last point is, you don't want to be like them people who don't want to hear from God. People who are defiant against any wisdom, any counsel, any godliness, any righteousness. They just talk to the hand. They just, they don't want to hear it. Calamity and disaster is going to take them people out. Do you understand? Now are you understanding some of the things you've been seeing this year? Because Lord knows we got some people they don't want to hear nothing about nothing, <laughs> nothing good. <laughs> anything that makes any sense, anything that makes any truth, anything that brings life, anything that brings liberty, 
they're against it. I ain't gonna call no names. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the principles out there and let you apply the names as you see fit. But they're against life. They're against truth. They're against health. They're against freedom. They're against anything that's right. The Bible told you that people like that don't take but one situation and they are out. Now, do you understand some of what you've been seeing this year? Can you see it? So to conclude, the prophetic word for today is to fall up. One of the benefits you have as a Christian is that when you fall, even if you fall seven times, you can rise again. You can rise again. You'll never be able to rise carrying all that guilt and that weight and that shame. And that's why Jesus took it for you at Calvary's cross. Well, Prophet Taylor, they might talk about me. They're definitely going to talk about you. That don't mean you have to accept it. Just because somebody throws shade at you doesn't mean you have to accept the shade. You ever think about that? <laughs> Just because somebody criticizes you doesn't mean you have to receive it or agree with it. They can think what they want. Because let me tell you something about all the people talk about you. They're not through living. Did that ever occur to you? Did it ever occur to you that while you're putting your mouth on somebody else's mistakes or failures, when you talk about them, your life ain't over. Did you know that? So you don't have to receive it. Just because they want to bring guilt and condemnation and shame does not mean you have to receive it. Okay? And we can retrace our steps through the Holy Ghost. You must ask the Lord. Don't try to do it on your own because you can't be objective. And make me better when I rise, but help me stay away from them folks that don't want to hear from you, God, that don't want to hear anything good or right or true because disaster is going to come and going to take them all the way out. I want to call some names, but I'm not going to call no names. But when you're not listening to what Jesus is saying through the precious Holy Spirit, the Bible already told you, disaster can just come and wipe you out. Now, all of a sudden, does 2020 start to make more sense to you now? But we can fall up. We can fall up. We can fall up. We can fall up. Good God Almighty, all right? If I wasn't saved, I would get saved right now. So a matter of fact, let me show you how to do that. If you're looking at me right now or you're listening to this broadcast live, you're looking at the replay. If you're not a Christian, this is how you become a Christian. A, B, C. A, admit you are a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, come from heaven, died on the cross for your sins and raised again the third day. C, confess all that with your mouth as you believe it in your heart. And that's how you get saved. It's just that easy. God will then take your old life and all of your sins, wipe them away from your account. God will then take Jesus's righteousness and add that to your account and count you as righteous, just as if you'd never sinned. Prophet Taylor, how does God do all that? Through his grace, it's a gift. It's not something we earn. It's not something we could earn. If God told us we had to earn it, we couldn't. It's something he gives to us through faith. A, B, C, admit you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Uh, died on the cross for your sins, rose again the third day. And C, confess all that with your mouth. That's how you become a Christian. It's literally just that simple. Okay? All right. Okay. All right. The Holy Ghost is saying that I need to give some more proof for those of you that are unsure about the prophetic. And for those of you that whatever you think, here we go. Some of y'all looking at me now, you got on some red, you got on some red ruffles. Some of y'all looking at me now, I see braids and I see, I'm seeing a lot of traffic. So some of y'all might be looking at me in your car. I'm seeing a lot of traffic. I've been seeing that in the spirits I've been looking today. Some of y'all are under great stress. Some of you looking at me right now, you're under great stress. You're under great financial stress. Well, you don't have to be a prophet to know that, Prophet Taylor. Uh huh. Some of you have, uh, I'm seeing a, a short, a short crop mustache like this. And I'm seeing some dark hair with a little gray in it. And I'm seeing some uh, olive skin and a tan shirt. Uh, some of y'all have spent your morning arguing. Some of you have spent your morning crying. 
And some of you have spent your morning in prayer and that's why you're listening to me now. God heard you and he sent his prophetic word so you could hear the Lord speak to you directly. Ooh, some of y'all have foot issues. I see uh, swollen feet. Some of y'all might be dealing with gout and maybe even injury. We're gonna get that here right now. If you're dealing with any kind of foot problem, if you can, reach your hand towards the screen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak the healing power of Jesus Christ through this broadcast. By your stripes, we are healed. I command your healing power to go into those feet, return those feet to normal size, heal the bones, the ligaments, the joints, the corpuscles, the circulatory system, oh God, in those feet. Do it right now, oh God. Do it right in front of them and let them see that your miracle power is flowing to heal them because you paid for every ailment and disease on the cross. And you are right now 100% whole in your feet in the name of Jesus Christ by the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Some of y'all have great worry about what's coming next. You know, I'd be a prophet to know that prophet, Taylor. Okay. Some of y'all have a sick mother. I see that your mother is elderly. She's not well. And your mother's kind of worrying you. And that's been bothering you. Um, some of you are very much feeling the pressure. I see a large family with people of many different ages. So I'm seeing the elderly. I'm seeing 20s, 30s. Seeing teens, I'm seeing very small children. And some of y'all, uh, some of you men in particular, you have, but some women too, but you have the weight of all that on you. And that's what's been bothering you. And you're not quite sure what to do. Some of y'all, the angels of God are over you right now, there to comfort you. And and that 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 peace that you feel, that's the very angel of God putting his wings around you to let you know that God is with you. And also I'm seeing the Holy Ghost wants me to say the same thing Elijah said, there are more that be with you than those that be against you. So stop being afraid. Some of y'all, you have a host of angels around you and your house and your family. And there's more, God has sent you more for you than there are against you. So don't be afraid of the demons, even though a host might encamp round about you, God has sent you more through his mighty angels to keep his arms around you. And finally, I'll say that I see, I see writing and I see tests and school papers. And some of y'all are very much dealing with some academic stuff. And God is saying that he'll give you wisdom to, to ace those tests. Um, some of those tests are in engineering. Some of those tests are in chemicals and chemical engineering. Um, some of y'all are into uh, our auto technicians. You're into building cars and your auto mechanics, you're repairing cars tech school for cars. And some of y'all looking at me are entrepreneurs. You're building stuff that has to do with the outside, the outdoors. You're building things that have to do with, I see a lot of gray. I see mountain climbing. I see hiking boots. Um, and you're carrying big thick backpacks. And some of y'all are dealing with uh, marine life. Sharks, turtles, dolphins, things like that. Wow. Okay. So all that was for those of you that don't believe the prophetic is real. If the spirit of God spoke to you and all that, what I just said is because he's trying to show you that he sees you, that he's with you. Because how could I know that? I'm just a person just like you. How could I know that? That's the Holy Ghost. Prophetics are real. And as a Christian, you have the advantage of being able to flow in it so that God can do all the things we talked about today. Okay. All right. Amen. That's our prophetic word for today. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. If you'd like to bless my ministry financially, you know that I don't do this for money. I do this because the Lord called me to do it. But there are quite a few people that have asked me uh, about sowing into my ministry and they want to bless me uh, financially. So I put my cash app on the screen and uh, uh, the money that you give just helps me do more. I have books. I have music. I have lots and lots of videos like this one, prophetic words, teaching videos, prophetic located words, and I'm coming out with even more. So if you want to uh, know where everything is, it's at my website, uh, www.prophetdavidtaylor.org. That's where all my stuff is. And you want to sow into my ministry. Remember, whenever you sow into a ministry, 
you get the mantle and the blessing and the anointing of that ministry on you. So when you sow into the life of a prophet, your prophetic is going to increase. Okay. And uh, when you sow into the life of an artistic or creative person, your creative is going to increase. Did you know that? Did you know that if you want to become more creative, give to someone creative. If you want to write better, you want to sing better, you want to write poetry, whatever it is you want to do, sow into somebody's life that does that. And their anointing and mantle will begin to come into your life. It's the most amazing thing. It's the most amazing thing. Okay. So that's for those of you that want to sow. Thank you so much. Uh, again, don't forget to like and share this video. Uh, the YouTube video of this, I always put the link up after the YouTube video uh, actually has more scriptures and stuff on the screen. It's a little bit different format. So don't forget to check that out. Okay. All right. I will be here same time next Sunday for our next live prophetic word, which is 2.30 PM Central Standard Time. Amen. God bless. And remember, remember, we can fall up. Remember the principles. Go back and watch this video from the beginning or watch it on YouTube and get all the principles down because we can fall up. We don't have to be like wicked people that are destroyed after one calamity. If when we make mistakes, we can ask God to raise us up and make us better. All right. Amen. God bless. And I'll see you uh, next time, next week.